Hi, everybody. I am back for another collage session um, working in my Art Mythos journal, um, doing 365 days of journaling. And this is week 39, and I'm on number seven, my seventh day of collaging. Um, I've decided to use these two. Um, this jelly print, which I kind of tore all the edges away from, um, and this piece where I was just lifting gold and other flecks off the jelly plate. Um, so this is my foundation. I'm thinking of maybe putting another foundation behind it, but it's just regular drawing paper. I used um, some gold paint um, and my jelly plate. So I use this, this um, paint, rolled it on the um, jelly plate, and then it picked up whatever residue was left on. And I tried to fill it as much as possible, but I like all the uneven texture. Most of it won't show up. I just wanted um, a background for the sky, which is also a jelly print on parchment paper. Same idea. I think I had done some stenciling with some inks and some light gold paints, and some, they were, you know, they're metallic, they're transparent, so it tinted the paints but kept a few flecks, and, um, and it has that transparent feel to it because it's just parchment paper. So it wrinkles and it gets all this fun texture. But I just wanted to use it. I've had it for a while, so I wanted to use it today. This is my seventh collage. I wanted to finish up the series with some pink and gold. Um, I have pinks and golds running through out the week um, here and there, but this is a lot of pink for the week. So I'm gonna finish up with that. I'm thinking about using some of these elements. Um, Again, I'm using the rectangle with a rectangle and kind of a jagged edge. Um, I'm thinking this. So I'm just, I'm jumping right in, I guess. I'm, this is um, um, an ink blot that I created on regular, I think it's copy paper, and then I glazed over it. So I put some metallic, couple of different metallic gold paints um, on the plate, um, pulled off the texture, you know, as I pull it up, you, it pulls up little flecks of texture. And then I, I um, use some ink to rub in to the different areas to make the gold pop up a little bit more. So it just adds a lot of um, dimension to the image. But, um, so I'm using this. All of these are basically my own prints or papers for today. Um, same with this, I'm thinking of using this and I kind of want this to be a little bit of a title or something. So I'm gonna do that. Um, I was thinking of using this as well, but I'm not, I'm not sure. Not sure how. Okay, yeah, I had a thought about this. So I will kind of just using, thinking about using all different kinds of, it's too much the same papers that I've either used before, you know, used in a different collage, and then, and then this was the extra piece, or you know, here's an, another ink blot, but that takes up too much space. I want the paint to show through, so not yet for that one. And then I have this leaf here. It might be nice. That might be nice. Actually, it's darker on this side, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna hurry up and trim this. When I say hurry up, I just mean that in my head, I'm thinking it's gonna take a while on camera to get this done, so.
So I'm leaving a little bit of an edge. Um, I don't really know why. Now I'm, now I'm not, so I guess I'll have to go back in. Sometimes I like to leave the border because I feel like the board, like a little edge of either black or white or another color, like it's just already there, um, just to help it pop out from the background. And sometimes, you know, the papers, like this one is tissue and it already has some glue on it because I was playing around with using it, I think, in a session last night. So, um, It's, it's fragile, but it has a little bit of a coating on it, so it's not as fragile as it could be. So I like it. Okay. So sometimes I leave an edge on it because adding, you know, um, an ink pad um, to the edges to make it pop would be too much. Like it would be too fragile for that. So that's why I do that sometimes. I leave, and sometimes I just leave, I like the white edge. Um, I don't want it as muted sometimes. This, I put some ink on the extra areas outside and then I ended up not wanting as much of that because it was greenish, had a green tone to it. You can see it in here. But, and it, but it was all the way around and then I thought I wanted the background paper to show so um but I didn't want it to be white so that's why I added the gold page behind um but anyways I think this one is going to be pretty quick because I kind of have all my elements here that I like and that I wanted so this is um a little piece torn from a book page and I it's an old vintage book page um well I'm assuming it is because it's it's really I love the paper and it's very I guess you want I want to say thin but it's I don't know it's also just yellowed so you know how that old paper yellows and this is an old book I found um it's a book of poetry book about poetry so I'm kind of feeling like maybe it goes there better, but I wanted a title, but maybe it's too big. Maybe that's too small for that area. So let me think about what I can do here. I like it like this, so let me see. Hmm, so I like this, so I'm going to keep it. So I'm going to make that decision now. So I'm going to do that now. It's going to be a little wrinkly. It's OK. And I like it like that. And then maybe I have some I have some washi tape. Um, I don't know if I'll use that. It's too white. This might work really nicely behind that. This is too silver. This is too yellow and sparkly. Yeah, maybe not, but I think it is. So, and then this is too peachy pink, so I'm not going to use that. Usually I'm not really big on glitter, but um, I like it sometimes, so I think I'm going to do this, do this. Hopefully that will and then Gonna do this. I like that. I think it would look nice with this here too, but I can do that another time. Mm, we'll see. Maybe not. Maybe I'll do it this time. So I have to think about it and I will pack this down. I think I'm just gonna. Okay, so 
So that looks like a little all over the place and a little bit messy, but it will work. A little bit crooked for my what I envisioned, so I'm gonna that works. Yay, it worked. Okay. Sometimes I like to do this because it kind of flattens it, but it doesn't hurt the surface of the print or the collage on the other side. So I do that, it flattens it, and then it doesn't curl all so much this way. Um, it might still curl, but not as much. And then I'm going to do this. I kind of feel like I want a crown there or something. Like I want something like that. There. Maybe I'll put it there. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. I think I feel like it needs a topper. So we might I think I'll do that. So I'm gonna put this guy there. And you know, I'm gonna center it though as much as I can. I'm gonna center it. And I have this idea that I might not want to keep this part in between, but I might, so might or may not. So I'm going to keep it not tacked down to think about it. Maybe it needs to be a little higher. Like that. So about the same on each side. And then I'm going to do this. I like it because it ties, you know, ties the two pieces together. So I will keep it right where it's at. And I want to kind of make it this. Yeah. I think because I want more, so I don't want, I want. That's good. Okay. Not going to think too much about it anymore because I'm starting to get into that way of thinking that I want it. That I want to just think too much about it. So I'm trying to. It's one of my practices as I do these collages is not to think so much about it. And it's rewarding because you don't think too much about something and then you still end up being pleased about it. It kind of shows me anyways that um, things work out. Things work out. And um, usually with art, I don't get too, I don't get stressed out about my art. I know of, I can think of, I don't get stressed out about it, but um, but the not overthinking or not thinking to, yeah, not overthinking it helps me in other areas of my life, I feel like, because in other areas I do overthink, and I feel like it really helps. Um, when I can 
trust that those are going to work out. And, and then they do. Then it helps kind of me translate that, that same practice into other areas of my life where um, I feel like could use more of that, could use more of that trust and ease and fun. Okay, last time that I'm moving it. Okay. The reason I was moving it was because I was thinking maybe I would like to put another piece down there and I actually think I still might. So I'm gonna leave it like this. I don't know if I have another piece like this. It's a, it's basically a, a photocopy. It's a photocopy of um, like a piece that I got. I think it's a Seven Gypsies. And I think I got it at Michael's or Tuesday morning, but I think I got it at Michael's, I think. So I basically photocopy it and I cut pieces out. So since I don't have a piece, well, I'll look really quick because I have my bin of stuff. Collage papers and elements here. So I will look for it really quickly. Um, don't waste too much time. If I find it, there's another jelly print. There's another jelly print. That's what this one looked like. Um, sort of. This was probably an earlier version of the one that I used here because it has more of the pattern and the stencil and, and all that. So I'll, I'll probably use this next next week. Um, now I'm finding all similar colors. So, okay, I'll stop sorting. Um, can't remember having printed that, so maybe what I'll do, so I'm finding more stuff here, but I'll do more potential background papers, so that's good. Oh, here's one, but it's not, it's not a pink piece of paper. So I think it came with this background, so I think what I'll do is I'll cut it. I think it matches pretty well as far as like the exposure, like the and I'll test it and maybe just the bottom part, I'll have a little bit peeking out or I'll have a little strip here and I'll have it along the bottom to kind of round it out and finish up. But maybe not, it might not work as far as, you know, you might like it better without, but I'm gonna try it. I will probably try to do this off camera because it takes a bit of time to cut inside all these little all these little pieces, all these little detail areas. It takes a while to cut it all out, so I will do that. This is my, um, I mean, I will call this finished as it is. Um, I will put it in with my other, excuse me, I will put it in with my other um, collage, collages for week 39. Um, and we will, I will be flattening all of these and then I will show them in my next video um, for week 40. I will be showing them off um, to say this is what I did last week and, and I'm jumping off from here. So in my week 40 video, you may or may not see an extra piece. I'll just decide off camera. And if I cut this up and use it, you'll see it. And if I cut it up and don't use it, you may see it in a future collage. But the more I'm looking at this, I'm happy with the way it is. So we'll see. I appreciate you joining me and um, I hope to see you next time. Um, I will be continuing to document my process of collage making for my art mythos um, journal. Um, we have 
15 to two weeks total. So I know I started a little bit late in the in the year as far as showing you all the process, but um, I'm definitely going to do a flip. My my intention was to do a flip with every week um, from week one to week 52. So, but I'm having fun making these video videos. So I'll continue with the videos, get through week 52, and then go back and um, resume the flips. Okay, thank you for joining me again and see you next time.